Okay, so this video clip right now came out just an hour ago, which would have been after I went to the library, but, you know. It's a minute and 12 seconds long, and I'm just going to say right now that 112, I already contacted the White House about A, uh, and B was also connected to the uh, hedging strategy that somebody, I don't know who, um, was working in connection with a city group notice from a couple months ago. It's been coming up a lot. But uh, let's listen to what they have to say. More than 20 million Americans now depend on the Affordable Care Act known as Obamacare. Stephanie Burton of Missouri says without the subsidy it provides, she couldn't afford health insurance while still paying big hospital bills from a miscarriage. I'm diabetic, I have narcolepsy, I have asthma, I have a lot of pre-existing conditions that were keeping me from being able to get affordable insurance. When Obamacare became law, it required nearly all Americans to get health insurance, the individual mandate, or pay an income tax penalty. And in 2012, the Supreme Court upheld the law as a legitimate use of Congress's taxing power. Then the Republican-led Congress set the tax penalty at zero. Now 18 red states led by Texas say what's left is just the mandate. What remains is the command under law to purchase health insurance, and that's not constitutional for the federal government to command people to buy something that they don't want. If the court agrees, it will then decide whether the rest of the law can still stand, including coverage for people with pre-existing conditions. The court might spare Obamacare. Three of the court's conservatives have said law should not be entirely struck down unless it's clear that's what Congress would want. says there's 18 red states led by Texas. This says the class of 1963 and the 18 young men who changed Harvard forever. Now this book is on the new bookshelf. It's just come out recently. It's not like the old time where they used to put the date. They stamped it with the date they got the book. I checked it out today. I saw it today. And I went right to a picture of a man who has a middle name that is my sister's last name, as I already said, and is also connected to a case that was cited in my effort last year to request a new trial specifically to discuss how, among other things, the Affordable Care Act is a contract to commit to a criminal drug conspiracy. I'm sorry, did I speak too loudly? Is there too much noise in your risk strategy, boys? Let me say this again. The Affordable Care Act is a contract to commit to a criminal drug conspiracy. Now, it would have sounded a lot different, maybe, if that spearheading Texas had taken on had not occurred while the Supreme Court of Texas was trying to make an example out of me and literally set up an act of assassination in the way they denied, dismissed, denied it just in time for an ex-dividend payment on a uranium company. I uh, apologize. Sometimes I have this thing where I happen to be on a variety of currents and they like to ping me and steal my notes and steal my legal filings and steal my life and swap it out with other people. Who among those 18 attorneys general that are going to have their name on that effort? Swap their life out with mine. Which state? Which state? Which one of you, after I contacted you, continue to persist in aiding and abetting acts of trafficking at the highest level in order to cover up for how what it really is is a contract to commit to a criminal drug conspiracy? <laughs> 